Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Well, as we come to the end of December, we look at our last Christmas movie. But Christmas is over! <laughs> we come to our last Christmas movie, Santa Claus. Ah, the timeless tale with the tool man himself, Tim Allen. God, I can't wait to see this wonderful classic again. That's the Big Lebowski. What the fuck? Wait a minute, this isn't the Tim Allen movie. This is something completely different. What is this, from the 80s? What the hell am I watching? I'm sorry, I I'm totally unfamiliar with this film. What else did this director make? Oh, great, that's fantastic! Once you've directed Supergirl, you can't possibly direct a good movie after that! No good movie at all! Christmas is the best of days. Who's the happy yes, it's the ever-growing cult classic Santa Claus the Movie, starring Dudley Moore, John Lithgow, and yes, the big Lebowski himself, David Huddleston. It's a strange, bizarre little film that promises to be odd and awkward all the way to the very end. Why is this movie continuing to gather such a weird yet growing audience? Well, let's close out December to find out. This is Santa Claus the Movie. So we open in sort of a Viking-ish village where we actually discover the origin of Santa Claus. Oh, you mean we're going to talk about the actual Saint Nicholas and what we historically know about him? He's a fat guy with toys. We're running with that angle. How does he find time to make all those things? He makes time. What can I tell you? It gives him pleasure. He hasn't put out in weeks, has he? Shut up! So Santa doesn't have all his magic powers yet. He's just a normal guy who makes little carvings and toys for all the kids in the village. So he leaves the set of Fiddler on the Roof and goes to deliver more toys. His rangers start to get weaker and have a hard time carrying on. You know, I appreciate your dedication, but you may have to consider the fact that you're fucking insane! I mean, these are two living animals and your wife that you are killing to make this delivery! I mean, seriously, who would risk their life just to deliver a bunch of toys? Santa cries, Santa cries, we all love Santa cries! Santa cries, holy fuck! Just huh, one moment, hey. Oh. 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 I just came through three snowstorms, two tornadoes, and a tsunami just to give you your Christmas gift. Here. It's like a Genesis. Yeah. I already got one. From who? You! Oh! <laughs> of course! <laughs> so you're gonna take this thing or not? Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm a, yeah, very, very grateful for that. Oh. So how about that weather, huh? I nearly died. That's right, that's right. Uh, can I get you anything while you're here? Nope. All right, yeah, we'll see ya. Santa cry, Santa Hello, eBay. So just when it looks like the Christmas equivalent of when the wind blows, suddenly a bright light appears, bathing them in a heavenly glow. Clearly they are dead. So little elves come out through the light, though I use the term little loosely, as one minute they're the size of G.I. Joe's, and the next they're just kind of short. And they take them into the magical world of the North Pole. What is all this? They're Christmas toys. Waiting for you. What have they got to do with me? You are going to give them to your children. You have all the children of the world. I won't live long enough for that. Both of you will live forever. Um, am I the only one who finds this a little threatening at times? I mean, granted, these people did save them from death, but then they're like, You live here now. Right? You deliver toys for all eternity. I didn't agree to this. You will live forever. I have some questions about or all- Or we could throw you out in the snow to die. Would you like that better? No. All right then. Get to work, slave. We're not paying you anything. So he comes across an elf named Patch, played by Dudley Moore. 
His job in this movie is to push his inventions and make as many bad elf puns as possible. It gives me a real feeling of elf confidence. Don't be elf conscious. He just needs a little elf control. Isn't it elf explanatory? I don't like elf assurance. I'm entirely elf taught. Heaven helps those who help their elf. Well, it's elf explanatory. You know how in the Smurfs, how they would replace every other word with the word Smurf? Uh, yeah. Let's, let's just imagine for a millisecond that that was remotely funny. This still wouldn't work! Speaking of Smurfs, have you ever noticed that there's no female elves in this place? Mrs. Claus seems to be the only woman for miles around. Your wife will also be our impregnated elf queen. What? Uh, nothing. Toy making time! So Santa Slave gets ready to go out on his first trip. But first, the outfit has to look right. Green's just not his color. What about, um... Red. Red! Perfect! Matches his cheeks and everything. Yes, you'll sell a lot more coke that way. But before he gets to his sleigh, we get this scene. Coming closer now. Two more degrees north by northwest. Now! Does someone want to clue us in what the hell just happened? A bright light shines in, it snows, they do nothing, and then they congratulate themselves for it. Are these just like the world's most excitable weathermen? And if you look at our five day forecast, you'll see that we get RAIN! So just as Santa gets ready to go, a character simply known as the Ancient Elf comes out to wish him good luck. And yes, he is played by Burgess Meredith. A prophecy has come to pass that there would come to us a chosen one. And that he, having no child of his own, would love all children everywhere. Oh my God, movie, lighten up! Even Jesus doesn't get this much buildup in most Christmas specials! From this day on, now and forever, you will bring our gifts to all the children in all the world. I want you to eat sprinkles and craft me Christmas cookies! How can I do so much in just one night? Time travels with you. The night of the world is a passage of endless night for you. Endless night, eternal working. This job is sounding better and better. So through the years, he travels around the world, gives toys, poses in front of shoddy blue screens, and soon all the children know the name of Claw. I was wondering if you would kill me today. Not today, back to work. I hate my life. It hates you. Ho, 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 ho. People even start to write stories about him. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. What? Is that how they think I look? Well, in the, the cookies. Hey, trust me, you being interpreted as a strong, muscular Santa is not everything it's cracked up to be. But for all the good that's being done, Santa realizes he needs a second in command. So he hires Patch to run the place with some of his new inventions to make toys faster. <laughs> I've invented Japan! So Santa supports Patch's attempt to put quantity over quality, that's the American way. And later, Santa comes across a little child who seems to be homeless. Imagine, out of all the years he's been doing this, he FINALLY comes across a homeless child! I guess he deserves special attention to all the other homeless kids that don't exist in this world. But it's Christmas Eve. Don't you know what that means? Yeah, it means you're out of a job till next year, you and the rest of the winos. Don't you know who I am? I'm Santa Claus! Right, and I'm the Tooth Fairy. Well, at least I can tell if I'm a boy or a girl. I guess I'll just have to do it my way. Alaka Child Abduction! Holy cow! How'd you do that? See, what did I tell you? So Santa takes him or her on the sleigh and shows off what he can do. But then they're suddenly spotted. 
Are you him? Are you Santa Claus? Boy, I hate it when this happens. Santa has to make sure that you have a silent night. <laughs> but it turns out the girl has met the boy. At least I think it's a boy. He's called Joe. Though that could mean Josephine. Anyway, because she used to leave food out for him. So Santa drops him off there for them to get better acquainted. But it turns out the toys that Patch made are all starting to fall apart. Patch, of course, watches in horror. Tell me, has there been a death in your family? This is funny stuff. And in a bizarre couple of scenes, kids actually start beating up the boy and girl because they said they rode with Santa? First of all, how do you know the kid isn't lying? Couldn't anyone say they rode with Santa? Second, if they do believe him, why are they beating him up? He rode with Santa! That's friggin' awesome! Guess what? I flew with Superman! Oh yeah, well he saved a plane my dad was on and it made him airsick! I blame you for some reason! <laughs> the girl doesn't have much luck either. Everyone knows he gives out shoddy cheap toys. My parents gave me a doll where she says whole sentences on a cassette. You don't have any parents, so meh. Ow! Dude, she fucking judo chopped that kid! So meh. Ow! Also, how do you make the word ow sound forced? I don't know, but this kid found a way. Ow! Santa has to fire Patch as his number two guy. And I'm not gonna lie, this is a really hard to watch scene. Patch, how can I say this? You see, I think that, um. Red. Red just. just isn't my color, you know? Oh, he spared Santa having to say it and gave up the job himself. That is the saddest fucking thing I've ever seen! Oh, boys. I'm gonna miss you, you know that, don't you? Oh, what? Now he's leaving? I take it back. This is the saddest fucking thing I've ever seen! Could they make it any more depressing than that? Oh, Jesus! The reindeer are crying? Fa la 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 We then cut to John Lithgow, playing the business head of a toy company. Actually, let me rephrase that. John Lithgow playing the alien from Third Rock, playing the business head of a toy company. Howard Swine, commies! He is beyond over the top in this movie. He's so evil that he puts nails in teddy bears. No, I'm not even kidding. He's called in the court because he put nails in his teddy bears. How the hell do you get nails inside teddy bears? It's not just a mistake. You have to make a concentrated effort to make that happen. The only thing more complicated would be getting Sean Connery inside of a bear- Well, they pulled that off. He seems like the perfect guy for Patch to go work for. Don't you believe in Santa Claus? Why should I? He never brought me anything. That's because you were probably a naughty boy. Yes. I guess I was no angel. So, you know this guy is a bad person and yet you still want to work for him? Welcome to corporate America, folks. Just let me use your toy factory. To make what? Something special. But to be fair, his business model could use a little work. What would it cost? Cost? Cost who? Uh, the people who, who buy the toy. Oh, well, nothing. We're going to give them away free. Oh. Oh, that's fantastic. How do you turn your face so red so fast? For free! <laughs> you know... I'm just imagining his acting coach behind the camera giving him advice. Okay, John, that was good, but I feel like you're holding back a bit. Let's go really out there this time. Do as I do. Okay, now here's the for free line. Let's go really subtle on this. For free! Oscar. But Lithgow does finally come around to agreeing, and Patch makes a magic candy that can make people fly. And he makes sure, just like Santa, that every kid gets one over the holidays. Well, the patchwork present comes from me. You'll find it under the Christmas tree. And best of all, you will agree, 
is that it's absolutely free. Cornelia, your step-uncle has just dropped by for a minute. Go in and wish him a Merry Christmas. Step-uncle? There's such a thing as a step-uncle? Isn't that sort of like having a step-friend? Merry Christmas, Uncle. It certainly should be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Lithgow is the girl's step-uncle. Seriously, even Spellcheck doesn't recognize that word. As the candy takes off like mad, which makes Patch think this somehow will get him in Santa's good graces. Odd strategy. But Lithgow has other plans. What would happen if you were to juice up the formula? It would make them fly. <coughs> fly. You are some terrific elf! I mean, I could convert the... I could convert the, the, the machines to do candy canes and, uh, in a week or two, and then I suppose... You can launch the ad campaign tomorrow. Strike while the iron is hot. But it's a year to Christmas. That's it. We'll bring it out on March 25th, and we'll call it... Christmas 2! Oh, we already have that, except the men suffer much more for it. It's called Valentine's Day. So we cut back to the little boy and the little girl. Okay, seriously, three years have passed in this movie. Do they ever age? And it turns out her step-uncle drops by to reveal his evil plan. Santa Claus is finished! I'm taking over Christmas! By next December, they'll be writing to me! <laughs> BZ. More Pat's Blue Ribbon in a brandy glass. Achoo! Well, Lithgow heard that incredibly forced sneeze and they capture the boy. They tie him up at the factory when suddenly we find out that there's a major flaw with the new flying candy. What? The candy canes exploded. They react to extreme heat and turn volatile. We've got millions of dollars pouring in every day. Most of it in cash. Cash, man! This stuff can kill people. Are you going soft on me? Not killing millions is going soft? We'll take the cash and let the elf taste the music. <laughs> mm, that laugh was subtle, but it's no FOR FREE! FOR FREE! So the girl notifies the police and gets Lithgow arrested, while also calling Santa to help. But Patch finds the boy tied up and lets him go. Fearing the worst, Patch decides to take his flying machine, filled with the candy canes in the back, to the North Pole. But Santa is on his way to stop them before it blows, so he pulls off the most pointless of stunts that he can. It's Santa! Santa! What was the purpose of that? Why did he need to do a loop? Wouldn't it make more sense if he just stayed under them at the same speed and then caught them after it blew up? God bless the useless Christmas miracles. Can I stay? Just till next Christmas. Please? And you can give her a lift home next year. Well, duly. As if I don't have enough to do. Now I'm going to have to be a school teacher. School? <laughs> oh, 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 now we've moved into kidnapping. This has got to be the creepiest North Pole ever put to film. Oh, 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 oh. At least that would be what happened if this all wasn't just a hallucinogenic dream followed by death. Okay, okay, that's not the real ending, but wouldn't it be awesome? <laughs> so that's Santa Claus the movie. It's stupid, it's corny, and it has a lot of slow moments, but to its credit, I do kind of admire it at times. I know that sounds weird, but there is sort of an atmosphere to it, and I actually do find myself enjoying the actor who played Santa. Okay, he's not a traditional Santa, he doesn't have the deep, booming voice, but he can carry a film pretty well. The silly moments are enjoyably silly, and even when it doesn't work, you can still feel the effort these people put in. It, you always feel like they're trying hard, even when it fails. So on the whole, a goofy movie, but I'll admit, I'm glad I saw it. If you're in sort of an odd mood and want to see a film that takes itself either too goofily or too seriously, well, then this is the Christmas flick for you. So thanks for watching all throughout December. I hope you enjoyed it and... Wait a minute. Next month is January. You know what that means? Star Trek Month!
Fuck Cream!